Peace family, I am so glad to be back and I just want to tell you guys a little bit more about the two things that we're actually sacrificing for our growth and development and transformation. So um, really just grounding ourselves in the purpose of the Kepra Challenge to begin with, it's really for transformation. So if you're not willing to sacrifice or you're not aware that you actually have to be uncomfortable in order to have that transformation and rebirth in order to grow and elevate and go deeper inside yourself and also just further into your purpose you have to let go of certain things and you have to also discipline yourself so for the Kepra challenge one of those things is meats and processed foods and really the challenge is a plant-based challenge because I really fundamentally feel like you can't necessarily focus entirely on your spiritual development and transformation if you are putting toxic things into your body because that's going to affect the integrity of your mind. It's going to affect, you know, like everything that we eat, the energy in our food, not only the energy of the animals and the hormones and the antibiotics and all the things that they're putting in the meat, but also even when it comes to just the energy of the people that are making your food, just getting more connected with your food and, you know, having more of a gratitude by being more connected. You know, we have the luxury of just going to a grocery store and grabbing something off the shelf and it has a farm on it and we just think like, oh, we're not even processing. Where did this food actually come from? A lot of this food is coming from factories. They're not coming from farms. And that's a really important aspect of the challenge. So I do want to offer support specifically in that area if you guys need any type of direction especially those who are in the prepping stage like what it is that you need help on as far as like grocery shop questions around what you should and shouldn't eat so the challenge is plant-based but i am challenging everyone so this here is just an example of a meal plan or a grocery list that you can use and i just put it so that it has a lot of substitutes for you know typical oils we would get typical seasonings like adobo or um, fruits and grains and just putting the most alkaline options out there so there's more than that that you're not limited to that this isn't your only meal you have 28 days I encourage meal planning to try to be as alkaline as possible meaning having a healing um, regimen and lifestyle so not necessarily a diet because you are not for affirming death, right? You're just affirming life and liberty and vitality and strength. So what you wanna eat is definitely things that are wild, or as Dr. Sebi would call it, electric cell food. And this is something that if you're not familiar with Dr. Sebi, he's a holistic healer um, and medicine man. Um, you know, you can call him a herbalist, whatever it is that you wanna call him, a nutritionist, but he healed so many diseases. I mean, everything that they say that we can't even heal, from cancer to AIDS. So I think that it's important to look into Dr. Savi and some of his work, but not get too dogmatic around anything. It's not about, you know, not eating this or that. It's really about listening to our bodies because remember, it's all about going inside and being intentional and on purpose with our healing journey and our transformation. So obviously we want to give ourselves the best nourishment so that we can have the best energy and strength to pursue this to begin with. So. Um, if you do have any questions around that, around alkalinity, how to you know discern which foods you should and shouldn't eat, I personally have like a general rule of thumb, which is if you have to ask, you probably shouldn't eat it. Um, just try to go the best route. You can't go wrong with fruits and vegetables. I know there's hybrids, there's all these different things, but really you're going to have to try to cultivate your own discernment in terms of what level you are at in your journey. So. Um, I definitely recommend staying away from soy because soy actually has a lot of xenoestrogens and hormonally that throws off our hormones. It's um, a lot of us with hormone imbalances and the xenoestrogens are actually androgen disruptors so they actually affect your reproductive health and that's something that you should be taken very seriously so I do want to avoid that, avoid Teflon, um, anything that does stimulate that xenoestrogen production so that you make sure that 
you're actually balancing your hormones and harmonizing your hormones. So it takes a little bit of research, you know, take that extra mile to, you know, you're not watching YouTube and spending hours on TV, right? So you can go and intentionally find research and information about these things. So that's what I really encourage you to do. Don't take anything I say my word for it, or Dr. Sebi or whoever else, um, Queen of Fua, you know, the works. Chef Aki, whoever it is, you need to figure out what works for you and what works for your body and how much you can commit to and what level of discipline is necessary for you to actualize that for the next 28 days. So yeah, that's it on food, I guess, for now. And I will be back and holla at you guys about the media aspect of it, music and all these different things and why that's an important aspect of this. And for anybody who's interested in listening to some good music, this is actually Spellbound by Kalissa. So um, I'll definitely post a link to that so you guys can definitely check that out in terms of finding some good high vibrational music that you can listen to with intention and purpose. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. I hope everyone's having a great day. All right, peace and love.